Good morning, everyone. Actually, I'm doing the video the day before, so it's good afternoon here, but it will be good morning to you in the morning. <laughs> All right, uh, we, we wanted to get in, and for those of you who are tuning in, have never seen me, I'm, my name is Kay Edwards, and I go to Canton Christian Center, and this is our Sunday school class that we've been doing since we've been quarantined. So I'm excited again, of course, as always, when I get into God's word, he just, it just excites me. And this study has been on the glory of God and just seeing in this chapter that we're doing now is about the fire of God. So it's good. It's been really good and it's been fun to study it and present it to you. And I pray that um, it blesses you. So let's just start with prayer. Father, we just thank you for your goodness, your love towards us in every way. Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness and your mercy because we need it. We need it, Lord, as a people. We need your forgiveness and your mercy. And I thank you for it. I thank you that we can call upon you and that you're there. I thank you that you are always there to hear us, Lord, as we call out to you that you're there to hear us. And so, Father, I come and I ask that you use, uh, Lord, that you use me as your vessel. And Father, that I will only speak your words and not mine. Lord, I give myself to you and this word and this lesson in Jesus name. Bless all who are listening and Lord use this for your glory in Jesus name. Amen. All right. We have been talking about steps to revival. What to do for revival in preparation for revival. And the essential steps is it's been so great. The first one of course was cry out to God to be ignited. To let God touch us, we need to cry out to him, right? We need to ask him to come in and give us the fire that we need. The second one was breaking down the old atmosphere in the local church or in ourselves because we are the church. Breaking down those old atmospheres and those things that hold us apart from God. And that was really good. And if you want to go back and watch those, you can. But tonight, it is be willing, or today... <laughs> be willing to pay the price for revival. So this was so interesting. I just, I love this. And, and you know, sacrifice is hard for a lot of us, isn't it? It's hard to sacrifice. Why? Because it deals with our flesh. It's something we don't want to do, but we need to do it. When I need to lose weight right now, I don't want to stop eating. <laughs> I want to. But my flesh gets in there. I made lemon cookies yesterday, and boy, they were good. I ate almost all of them. Lord. All right. So um, so it's sacrifice. And sometimes we have to get our mindset on that sometimes, too, and say, I will do this. We have to make up our minds to do it. All right. You know, it, talking about paying the price. And when you think about paying the price for something, you think about money, Right. So when you pay for something, there is a value attached to it when you pay for something. If it's free, it, it, in your mind, it really has no value. Even though it might be something good, if you didn't pay for it, if you didn't put a value on it, you don't have to do it. I was reading a book the other day that was talking about um, having to pay for a class, a class to learn something. And he had gone to public school and he had to do it, but it was not something he put value on. It was all, it was all free. But when, and so public school is a good example of that. Welfare is a good example of that, that it can be taken advantage of. And that if there's, if there's not a value put on it, if you don't have to pay anything. But he was talking about when he had to pay for these lessons, even though he didn't want to do it, he did it because he knew that he didn't want his money to go to waste. So there was a value attached to what he was doing. So if we pay for something, whether it's with money or it's with our time or sacrifice in other ways, there is value attached to that. What price did God pay for us? Well, let's look. We all know that, but let's look in Revelation 5. And I'm going to read it out of the King James, out of the Bible here. And let's start uh, in verse 9. And it says, 
they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy, you are worthy, Lord, to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for you were slain and has redeemed, have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. In other words, Lord, you were slaughtered for us. You, you were killed and murdered, <laughs> taken for us, or put on the cross for us. And yes, the Jews did murder him, but he gave his life willingly for you and I so that we can be redeemed. He paid a very high price for us. So is there value on you? Oh, you better believe it. The value of Jesus's blood is on you. So he paid a price for us. Now, talking about paying a price for the fire and paying a price for what we want in God, we're going to pay a price one way or another. One way or another, there's going to be a price paid. So you might as well pay the price to live for God than paying the price the other way because it's not going to be pretty. And that's what this says right here. In <clears throat> Proverbs 18, 7. Well, let me, uh, let me start in Proverbs 13, 13 first. Proverbs 13, 13. Proverbs is known as the book of wisdom, right? So we can gain wisdom from Proverbs. And also there's a lot of wisdom in these words. So Proverbs 13, 13 says, despise the word, will you? Then you'll pay the price and it won't be pretty. But the one who honors the father's holy instructions will be rewarded. So if you despise the word of God that he has given himself for, his word that stands when nothing else stands, you're going to pay the price for it. So, but if you honor God's word and his teachings, you will be rewarded. And that's so true. I've seen that over and over how God rewards us. And it's all a matter of the heart. All of it's a matter of what's in here, what's in our heart, what's in our center of our being that we give to the Lord, right? All right, then another one, Proverbs 18, 7. A fool has a big mouth that only gets him into trouble and he'll pay the price for what he says. Have you ever been there? Wow. I always say, God, give me grace. <laughs> give me grace. If I say something that's not, you know, that, that's foolish, give me grace. So we want to be wise. We need God to give us wisdom and we can pray for that. Are we always, do we always say the right things? Maybe you do. Maybe you're perfect, but I, that, I need God's grace. If we think we're perfect, yes, he says strive for perfection, but if we think we're perfect, we'll never really think we need God's grace. And he shed his blood, his precious blood for us. It wasn't free. I'm so thankful that I can, I can cry out for that whenever I need it. God, I, 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 I didn't say the right thing here. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Cleanse me, Lord. Or Father, help me to have wisdom in my words. Help me to have wisdom in what I say. Because Lord, I have flesh. Take that flesh and let your spirit rule, right? Okay, so we want to have God's we want to, because we're going to pay the price one way or the other. But you know what? If you're God's, what's that verse that says, though he stumble and fall, the Lord will pick you up. If you're God's, he's going to direct your paths. But there may be some times when you stumble. There may be some times when you fall. But the God, God's got his hand there like he did with Peter when he looked at the waves. He wasn't so perfect that he kept his eyes on Jesus, was he? He looked at the waves, and guess what happened? He began to doubt. But guess what? Jesus was right there to lift him up out of those angry waves and, and uh, be there for him, even though he took his eyes off of him. He's a, he's a wonderful father. So if there's somewhere where you feel like you've messed up, don't let the condemnation come on you. Boy, I've dealt with that. I know how that is. But God is there to say, here's my hand. I'll lift you up. Because if you love him, now if you have the attitude and the heart that says, I don't care. I did nothing wrong. I didn't do it wrong. They all do it wrong. That's a whole different thing. Because when you have the heart for God, you're going to look at yourself and you're going to let God judge you instead of letting the uh, men judge you. 
and blaming it on everybody else. Okay, so <clears throat> here's another one. Proverbs 19:19. 19, 19, a hot-tempered man has to pay the price for his anger. If you laid if you bail him out once, you'll do it a dozen times. If someone doesn't deal with their anger, they're going to pay the price for it and you will too if you're bailing him out because he will keep doing it until he deals with his anger because you'll have to keep bailing him out and bailing him out because his anger, he has not restrained it. He has not let the Holy Spirit come in to uh, be the temperance for that because we have the fruits of the Spirit if we allow God in to let him deal with those things and realize how wrong it is. So we're gonna pay the price. So um, listen to this one, Psalms 58, one. God's just, justice, you high, this is, I'll tell you what, this talks about a lot today. You high and mighty politicians know nothing about it. Which one of you has walked in justice toward others? Which one of you has treated everyone right and fair? Not one. You only give justice in exchange for a bribe. For the right price, you let others get away with murder. Wow. You know, when, when um, this is talking about how people will pay the price because they think they're high and mighty and can get out of everything. We've seen that just recently with um, Epstein and, and some of the others that we've seen how they, because they felt like they didn't have to give account to, of their sins and they come upon them and they even bribe other people. And that's going on today with so many and politicians. But you know what? It's, it's not going to last forever because God who is the judge is the one who will expose it. And that is what's so awesome. But they think that they can make others pay the price. But see, if we don't, we're gonna pay a price anyway. So we might as well pay the price in righteousness. We might as well live for God in the way that he desires us to. So what, uh, do you want the fire? Do you want God's anointing? Do you want his power? And it can mean sacrifice, which is paying the price. Giving yourself to God more than other things. Laying things on the altar. Let's look at um, page 220, number three, where it says, be willing to pay the price for revival. Okay, revival is being awakened, right? It's, it's, uh, we talked about that last week. Coming, um, being revived. And we need to be concerned for souls. We need to be right now praying for those who are lost to come to God. This is a time when people need the Lord more than ever. And we need to be concerned about that. We need to be concerned of what God is concerned for. God is concerned for souls. So that's what we need to be concerned for and pray for, for, the, for people to connect with God. You know, the fire ignites passion, which is action because passion causes you to act because you're passionate about it. Passion drives action. So when you're passionate about something, it will drive you to act because you are in love with that and you want to act. That's the way we need to be with God. Do you want the glory? We need to make ourselves available to God. Okay, so let's read this on page. We'll start at the bottom of page 221. Now this is talking about uh, um, Guillermo Maldonado is talking about what is going on in his church and what is happening there because they have been willing to pay the price. Our ministry is a living testimony that is worth paying the price for the fire. From the beginning, we have had a continuous revival. Wow. What do I mean by this? We have witnessed or heard about the salvation of thousands of people at the altar of the church and thousands more in the nations in which we have ministered. Thousands have been filled by the Holy Spirit and baptized in water to become faithful disciples of the Lord and have been filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> we have witnessed countless healings, deliverances, and restored marriages and families. Thousands of young people have been delivered from drug addiction, and there have been miracles, signs, wonders, and incidents of supernatural provision. Thousands receive and are filled with joy and fire, and thousands are ignited by the fire of the passion of God and go out to preach Jesus everywhere. See, it's 
building, it's bringing action. I could continue listing the fruits of the continuous revival, but I believe that the key has been the constant manifestation of the glory of God in our congregation, as well as the churches under our spiritual covering, which are spread throughout 30 nations of the world manif and manifest the same revival and evidence of the same fruit. Wow. How often have we seen these things? Every time I preach to God, Every time I preach the Word of God for more than 20 years locally and internationally, I believe this is due to the fact that we have made ourselves available to God, that we are committed and ready to pay the price to have a continuous revival of the Holy Spirit in our midst. Now, are we willing to get out of God's way? Because see, that's what it is. It's getting out of God's way and laying ourselves at the altar you know, putting our flesh down of what the things we care about, but say, saying, okay, God, I might not understand this or that, but I'm going to let you have your way because that's what matters. So sometimes we can quench God by getting in the way. Sometimes, and, and God says, do not quench the spirit of God. Or in first, Thess it's in first Thessalonians 5, 19, it says, never restrain or put out the fire of the Holy Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't put it out. Quenching is putting it out. You know, um, stomp, stomping it out. A good example of that is Balaam. When he saw the Israelites and all the children of God, he was going to talk, you know, and put it, he was going to put a curse on them. He was ready. God's blessing was on them. I don't know if he was jealous or what the problem was, but he was ready. He was going to put a curse on them. So he got on his donkey to go. So he was in the way of God and in the way of God blessing his people in the way of God's anointing and fire on his people. He was going to curse them. So <clears throat> what happened? It says in um, 2 Peter 2, 16, that a donkey who had never spoken before, who could not speak and had words not to speak, spoke with a human voice to keep him from going the way he was going. There was angel swords up there, the angels with swords, and they would have lopped off his head if he had gone that way. The donkey saved his life and also kept him from putting a curse on God's people or going that way. He was standing in God's way and you cannot stand in God's way. Now, you're going to have consequences for that. He would have had some dire consequences had it not been for, the, for God opening that donkey's mouth. Praise God. So um, we need to listen to God and hear his voice. We need to pray that we don't stand in his way, but make ourselves available to God. So what, what sidesteps God or pushes him aside in your life? What is it that, that causes you? What are you standing in the way of God for in your life? As you believe, as you believe God, unbelievers may come against you, but that's okay because Jesus is for you. So no matter what happens, what you see and what's around you, believe God, trust in him and put him first because that's where the sacrifices, where God will bless you. So what are the sacrifices? Hebrews 13, 15 says, we no longer offer up a steady stream of blood sacrifices. They used to, they offered the animals up for God as sacrifices. But through Jesus, because of his one-time sacrifice that he gave his life for, we will offer up to God a steady stream of praise sacrifices. These are the, are the lambs we offer from our lips that celebrate his name. This is Hebrews 13, 15 in the Passion Translation. Isn't that beautiful? Our sacrifice of lambs is the praise of our lips to God. Offer, and so many times he says, give the sacrifice of praise through your lips. Offer up praise to him. So the sacrifice of praise, what is that? When we don't feel like it, but we know God is so good, so we're going to offer him up praise, even though we might not feel like doing it. So even though when things aren't going right, offering up praise, that's a sacrifice, right? That's a sacrifice because we love him so much and we want to offer to him but it matters what our heart is see because <clears throat> there's a balance there 
In Proverbs 21, 3, it says, To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. 1 Samuel 15, 22 says, To obey is better than sacrifice. Does that rule out sacrifice? No. We should worship God with the praise of our lips, but it, our hearts should be involved. King Saul was told to wait for Samuel, the prophet, before he offered up sacrifice, and this was from God. But the people began to say, oh no, we, we need the sacrifices now. You need to offer them up now. And he began to feel compelled by the people instead of listening to God's word. So you know what he did? He offered up sacrifices, but his heart wasn't right because he was in disobedience. And so then, Samuel gave the word of God, which says to obey is better than sacrifice. You should have obeyed because your heart was not in it. You were just being pushed and doing what the people said. Your heart was not to sacrifice God because you didn't obey God. So what happened? There were consequences. He had to pay a price for that. He lost the kingdom. So it's important that we say, God, whatever you want, you know, I want to give myself to you and my heart matters. So I want to serve you in the right way. Have you ever done something wrong and you just, your heart, it bothered your conscience, it bothered your heart? That's good because that shows that your heart is in the right place. And if we don't, if it doesn't matter to us, then we need to really get right before God because we want to be right before God. If we fear the Lord, that's the beginning of knowledge is fearing God. And fearing God is knowing that He's the one we're going to be accountable to. So we, and because he's so good to us and he gave everything for us, he gave, he took himself out of heaven and came here to give himself to us. He gave his whole life that he didn't have to do and went through the agony of being beat and all of what he did just for us. So how much more can we just sacrifice by when we don't feel like it. And it's hard. It's hard sometimes when I feel like I need to wake up and I don't want to get up. And I fail sometimes. I don't always do that. And so, you know, but I want to. I want to get better. Our, our spirit's willing, but our flesh is weak. So it, we always have that time where we come back to God and say, Lord, you help me in this. You help me. Romans 12, 1 says to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. See, God wants our lives. He wants us to present ourselves, our bodies and ourselves to him. That is what he is longing for. He wants connection with us. He wants our full attention, everything that we have. He has created our bodies. We are the temple. So he wants our temple holy. And to be holy is presenting ourselves to God and saying, Lord, I'm yours. Now, Psalms 51, 16 through 17 says, going through, the motion, going through the motions doesn't please God. A flawless performance is nothing to God. I learned God worship when my pride was shattered. Heart shattered lives ready for love. Don't for a moment escape God's notice. See, when we can put our pride down and we can look to God and give ourselves to him, I, I've been there. It's in the, the brokenness that we put our pride down. It's in those things that we can turn and, and turn from religion and turn to relationship because realizing how much he paid for us and what he's done for us. Because there's a difference, as I've said before, in religion and relationship. I don't want religion. I hate it. I hate it. It is critical, fault finding. There's a lot involved in that. They are the very ones that were religious that killed Jesus. I don't want that, but I want to hear from God and know that he can speak to my heart through the word of God. That's why we need to read the word of God. The devil can distract us from the word of God so easily and, and get us away from it because he doesn't want us transformed. He doesn't want the fire of God on us and we need the fire of God. We need him this day. So the rest of this on page 220, 
says, likewise, we have taken this revival of miracles, salvations, and deliverances to over 50 nations around the globe with the same glorious results. And we plan to continue expanding and bringing the fire to every country and continent where the Lord will take us. So that's where God wants us. He wants us as believers to come and offer ourselves to him. Now, there may be people that come against you and uh, not like what you're doing, but you know what? God is with you, and that's all that matters. If you're doing what God wants, sure, you might make mistakes and you might do the wrong things, but he's there with his hand to pick you up. If you stumble, he's there to get you on the right path. So do you feel like you've stumbled? Do you feel like there have been times when you've missed it? Cry out to God and just say, Lord, I want your hand. I need your hand to help me. Lord, I need to know wisdom. I need to know the right way. Forgive me, Lord, and cleanse me because we all need to work out our own salvations with fear and trembling. That's what the word says, to work out our salvation with fear and trembling because there's too many distractions there's, we've got an enemy and there's too many things that would want to cause, cause us to fall away. Is it that hard? No. It's just keeping our eyes on him, just making sure that we keep our eyes on him and he will lead us and guide us. But it's when we get our hearts involved and our attentions involved in something else that we can lose that. So, all right, I am gone over a little bit, and next week we will come back to decide to seek and to have an experience with God's fire, and it all starts with a decision, right? If you don't know the Lord today, this is your day. Today is the day of salvation. It's your day to turn to the Lord and say, Lord, help me. If you've gone away from God, or maybe you just need, you want that fire again. You want to be revived. All you have to do is cry out to God and say, Lord, I want to be revived. Revive me and bring me back again. It's that simple. It's very simple. We just call out to him and he's there with his hand to help us. So let's pray and you pray along with me and we'll believe God because all we have to do to be saved and know him is to confess with our mouth that he is Lord, to turn from our ways and serve him. That's it. Confess, believe on him. Turning from our ways because we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and we confess with our mouth our sins because we've all sinned. All right. So, uh, Lord, we just come before you and we thank you for this time. I pray that if anyone does not know you today, that they or need your help, that they will call out to you today and that the fire of God will come on them and they will experience, Lord, your anointing and they will experience your forgiveness and your grace and that they will love you so much more. And Father, that you will put them in the right places that they need to go, that you will lead them and guide them and that, Lord, every doubt that will try to come on them will be banished in Jesus' name. Father, we pray also that this, this virus would be done away with in Jesus' name, Lord, and that everything that is wrong and not of you and not in justice will be exposed in Jesus' name. And Father, that you will take control. Lord, we pray and ask, oh God, that you would come as people are praying that you would forgive us of our sins and heal our land. And we praise you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I will see y'all next Sunday. Y'all be blessed. I miss you. Bye-bye.